Oh my God, what am I witnessing? Everybody's going back to the Mac. Let's find out why. All right, I got a discount for you. We're talking Xbox Live. Loads of gaming discounts. All you have to do is go to my description, copy my code from the description, paste my code. Woof, it's gaming time. Right, so if you don't know, these two fellas here have switched from the XPS 15 back to the Mac or to the Mac. It seems to be a common theme going around the internet at the moment. So why is everybody switching to the Mac and is it time to go back to the Mac? If you guys are new around here, come on, sub up, join the wood train, hit that bell, ding a ling a dong, and I'd appreciate a caress of that like button. So first things first, let's find out why everybody was leaving the Mac and why some people wouldn't be even considering the Mac at all. And there's no one more qualified on the internet to tell you this than me. The reason why is because my most common question ever on my channel, and you gotta remember, a lot of guys that review sort of PC laptops and stuff, well, just PC stuff in general, they don't review Macs as well. And I do quite a lot of Mac videos, and I use Macs a lot too. I am by curious. And the most common question I get asked is, I have left the Mac for this reason, for that reason. I'll get into those reasons in a minute. What is the best PC Mac alternative? It's mostly to do with laptops. And the answer is always XPS 15. I mean, you can get an Aero 15, which is an amazing laptop. And it's got so many features. It's a powerhouse. Everything you want in a laptop. But it's not a MacBook Pro. And even the X1 ThinkPad Extreme too. That is nothing like a MacBook Pro. The only laptop in the Windows world that is like a MacBook Pro is the XPS 15. So there's the answer to that question. And the reason why people were leaving the Mac, they were all pretty much the same. Now we have to go back to 2013 to figure out why people were leaving the Mac. First of all, when it comes to desktops, they released a trash can Mac. The rest is history. No professional to wonder desktop wanted that thing. Then we fast forward to 2015. And at this point, Apple was still the kings of the premium laptops. And by the way, the biggest selling Macs are obviously MacBook Pros. And at this time, Apple was still the king, undisputed. But then in 2015, we got the XPS 13, we got the XPS 15, you know, Infinity Edge displays. And Windows laptops just started to step up their game in terms of these premium laptops. And they figured out what Apple figured out a long time ago, is the money's not in those cheap volume things, it's in the premium segment, big, high profits. That's the way you want to do it, especially in a declining sort of sector. You know, PCs were declining. And when I say PCs, I mean everything, even including Macs. Mobile was starting to take over. Now that's sort of plateaued now. And then in 2016, Apple released probably their most hated sort of laptop was the MacBook Pro 15 and even like the 13 inches as well with a keyboard that a lot of people hated. And that's a problem. You can't have a keyboard that so many people hate. There are people that love this keyboard. But you need a keyboard where 90% of people go, yeah, it's fine. Not where 50 or 60% say, I hate this thing. That was the first reason people were switching. Second reason was they were behind the eight ball in terms of processors and stuff like that. You could get much more powerful laptops on the Windows side. I mean, in 2016, when they released the MacBook Pro 15, I made a video on why it's a fail. Because at that time, Cabby Lake CPUs were out. They released the MacBook Pro 15 with Skylake CPUs. So one generation behind, they released it with DDR3. And that severely limited the MacBook Pro 15 because DDR3 could only go up to 16 gigs RAM. Pros wanted more power and you could get more power on the PC platform. Also, the port situation. Four Thunderbolt 3 ports on the MacBook Pro 15 or whatever, the MacBook Pro 13. 2016 was not the time to release a laptop like that. People did not want to deal with it. You know, everything was on USB Type A and you wanted an SD card slot. It was just bad timing by Apple and no one wanted to live the dongle lifestyle. So Apple were making computers that weren't serving the needs of the people that use them. The creators, the professionals, or even just a normal consumer did not want a laptop with no ports. They did not want a trash can Mac. They did not want older technology. They wanted the best power they could get. I think YouTubers help consumers be more educated on, you know, what they can get for their buck. 
And that leads me on to the next big reason why people are leaving the Mac is because of the price. The price was just nuts. I done a comparison when you upgraded the MacBook Pro to one terabyte SSD and 32 gigs RAM with the i9. It was $1,700 US, more expensive than the XPS 15 with the same sort of specs. That is just ludicrous. I mean, yeah, Apple have great resale value and yeah, you'll pay a bit more to buy an Apple product, but not that much more. I mean, you could buy an iPhone with that. You could buy another laptop with that. You could buy so many shoes with that. Go on a holiday, whatever. That price was just unjustified. And to that end, Apple were just not making a laptop or a desktop computer that anyone wanted, that pros didn't want or consumers didn't want. And then there were reliability issues with the keyboard and stuff like that. It just wasn't a good few years for the Mac. And loads of people were leaving and I got that question all the time. And then, yeah, I steered them towards the XPS series or something like that. But now people are switching back to the Mac. Why? Why? Well, let's first stay on that price point there. They fixed up the pricing. And yeah, I'm not talking about that crazy Mac Pro. And by the way, that's one of the reasons, you know, professionals, they're not going to buy that trash can thing. Now they can buy the Mac Pro, which is a serious workstation. So they've listened to what the pros want and they've given the pros what they want. And that Mac Pro is going to be a big success. It's very expensive, but it is a professional workstation. But on price, if we look here, if I look here, I'm just going to type in i9, okay? Okay. Right, so we're getting all these laptops. And let's have a look. Which one is the cheapest i9 out of all these laptops? And you'll be surprised to know. Have a look at some of these i9s. Like 5,000. This is Australian dollars. And, you know, nearly 6,000. Uh, 6,000. 6,000. 6,600. Uh, 5,300. All right, 5,000. Another 6,000. Okay, what is the cheapest one here? Have a look at this. i9. Cheapest one, MacBook Pro. Can you believe that? This is insane. All right? The MacBook Pro is the cheapest i9. Uh, maybe on on par here with sort of like the Aero. The Aero is the same sort of price. That is unheard of. Okay? So they've reduced the price and it's just amazing what you get now for the price. And they're very price competitive. If you get an i9... I mean, the Macs are virtually the cheapest you're going to get with the i9. And you can get one terabyte SSD and stuff like that. They've addressed the price issue. And then when you factor in the resale value, I know for a fact, all right, from willing and dealing, selling laptops, which I've done with XPS 15s and other PCs and stuff, if I buy this thing here for 4400 the next model comes out and I sell it, oh, I'm going to lose 25 k easy. Just poo, straight away. The MacBook Pro, let me tell you now, I sold the 15-inch MacBook Pro for $4,400. Cost me $5,600. I sold it for $4,400. Like, that's amazing when I'm going to lose a lot more on a PC. So I think they're more price competitive, and I think they knew. And when do you get a bigger laptop with a bigger display, a better display that costs less than the previous model? It's like... That's so unapple like And they listen to what pros want. All right, they didn't give you the ports that everyone wanted, but this is the time that you get rid of all the ports, okay? Everybody's using USB Type-C now. 2019, 2020, it's the right time. And I'd rather have the bandwidth of having four Thunderbolt 3 ports than having, you know, USB Type-A. Other than maybe on a gaming laptop, I don't want USB Type-A. And by the way, I'd rather not have an SD card reader because if you have an SD card reader, you gotta take one of the Thunderbolt 3 ports away and maybe make it into USB Type-C because these laptops only support 16 lanes. You got four Thunderbolt three ports there's your 16 lanes gone there you cannot have four thunderbolt three ports and an sd card it's just impossible whatever i'll just prefer it like that it's the right time to be thunderbolt three only and they listen to what people want it's thicker now you know people were complaining that the last one was too thin and thermal throttled and stuff like that you didn't get the performance of pcs now they're giving you much better thermal performance they give you a bigger battery they've listened to what pros wants and that's why they got four thunderbolt threes because pros would rather have the four thunderbolt threes as well and pros would rather have a bigger thicker laptop maybe a little bit heavier they would want a bigger screen they listen to what the pros want even with the mac pros and i expect a new macbook pros 13s and 14s they've addressed the key keyboard issues as well they've addressed the price issue and and that just makes 
the Mac a much more viable product now to buy. And I think most of the people that have been asking those questions, I reckon if they'll buy a laptop today and the keyboard's fixed and the thermals are fixed and, you know, we don't care about the ports that much anymore and the price is right, I don't think they'll be switching to the PC. And that's why I think a lot of people that are using PC that are switched from Mac, they're going back to the Mac if it's the right time to upgrade. And we have people that are on the Mac that were thinking about going to the PC. They're like, no, the Mac is back, baby. The Mac is back. And now they're going back to the Mac. I've got to say, there were a few rough years for Apple with the Mac. But they're back. The Mac is back. I mean, the only criticism I've got of the new 16-inch MacBook Pro is it doesn't have Wi-Fi 6. And I reckon that's probably because they use Broadcom and maybe the Broadcom Wi-Fi is not ready. I fully expect when they bring out 10th generation CPUs for this to have Wi-Fi 6 in this. And then it's the perfect laptop. I mean, I would, you know, enjoy if it was a more high resolution display. And, you know, the rumors are this year, if you're listening to it in 2020 or next year, there will be a new mini LED display that will be HDR and everything you want. And then it's just like, if this has mini LED, 10th generation, you know, 10 core CPU, I mean, this MacBook Pro would be virtually perfect. And I expect they're 14 inches. I wonder which way they're going to go. I'm going to have to make a video about that. Are they going to Ice Lake? Or are they going to the 6-core Comet Lake? I wonder which way they're going to go. Or maybe there's going to be an ARM MacBook as well. Not into this ARM thing. I mean, what are you going to do for Thunderbolt and stuff like that? I mean, yeah, all right, you can use Thunderbolt 3. But I don't think Intel, once they upgrade to PCI Express 5 and they have Thunderbolt 4, which is like double the bandwidth of Thunderbolt 3, I don't think they're going to release that to ARM computers. <laughs> I still would prefer to stay with Intel. But anyway, that's another discussion for another day. To summarize, Apple have just listened. They gave people what they want and they're not ripping us off too much. Hats off. You know, I was there kicking the boots into Apple in 2016 when they released that MacBook Pro 15. And yeah, I gave it a nice kick in the plums, but um, as well as Apple. But now I've got to just take my hat off and say, well done. And I do think when you get a good Mac, it is a great experience and that's why people stayed there. You know, they'll pay the extra for the experience and it is a good experience. And generally speaking, they are tougher than they look. They are reliable. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you sub up, join the wheel train, hit that bell, ding a ling a dong, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.